On the 13th of November, we should be getting our hands on the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, unless it's delayed again, but I find that incredibly doubtful as Toys for Bob don't want to hurt me like that. The trilogy includes the first three Spyro games, which are Spyro the Dragon, Ripto's Rage, or as us Europeans know it, Gateway to Glimmer, we got the crap title with that one, and Spyro Year of the Dragon. In this video, my friend Jake and I are going to be taking a look at six things we're really excited about going into the Reignited Trilogy. Before we go into this video, I'd like to say a big thank you to Jake for working with me on this. I know how much of a gaming bridezilla I can be. Does that even make sense? Um, thank you for working with me on this. I know he really wants you guys to enjoy the video. We've recorded it in a slightly different way, I'm sure you can probably tell. Um, we've not been using a script, which is what I usually do, so do let, um, do let us know what you think about that. As always, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you go on to enjoy what you see here and share it with a friend. A friend that maybe dreams of being a purple dragon or something like that. It's okay to dream. As well as this, if you just can't get enough Spyro content, once you've watched this, go ahead and check out the video which I released last Wednesday where I talk about why the Spyro Reignited trilogy should come to the Switch. See, that bit was scripted, but the rest isn't. But first things first, we need to talk about the title character Spyro the Dragon because he looks absolutely adorable. The colour that they've given him looks perfect. It's a much brighter colour than the original to add to the bright colourful design that they've given everything in this new game. Sparks as well is looking absolutely fantastic. I love the fact that they've given him a different animation depending on what colour he is. The more hurt he gets, the more hurt he looks. And I particularly like the green where he, he looks like he's on his last legs. Other characters that need a mention in this video are Sheila, Hunter and Elora because they look incredible. I love Sheila's new look with the hair and the jacket. She looks like she really belongs in an Australian outback. Hunter, I love his look in Sunny Villa in the skate park with the shorts and the helmet. The animation on Hunter's face looks incredible. He's been animated really well. And the spots on him, obviously he's a cheater and they've given him the black stripes that you find on real cheaters, which he never had before. Elora is absolutely perfect. The way she's animated and the way she's voiced really complements Spyro's new look. Let's go ahead and look at the dragons then. All the dragons which we have currently seen take on themes from their worlds. The dragons in the first world, Artisan's world is what it's known as, take on the theme of artists. Great examples of this are that Nestor has appeared as a sculptor and Nevin can be seen with a paint palette and brush. In the fourth world, Beastmakers, all the dragons take on what appear to be like a tribal motif, and for worlds two and three, we're unsure, but we're excited to see what Toys for Bob have got in store for us. The dragon themes are a pretty cool addition from Toys for Bob. The only dragon we're not currently buzzing for is Cassia. I probably pronounced that wrong, so sorry. And we're not quite sure what's going on there, but I guess you can't like everything. Another notable feature is the way Toys for Bob have maintained the shimmer sound the crystallized dragons make when they are frozen, but drastically changed the effect when they are freed. It gets a whole lot brighter than before, and we like it. However, even with the changes to the dragons we have discussed, they still maintain their feel from the original games, or the original game. It's great how Toys for Bob have managed to bring back the feeling we had when we freed a dragon in the original game, but they have made it even more rewarding whilst bringing the game into 2018. So far, we've only seen Nasty Nork and Ripto, but both of them are looking absolutely amazing. We have seen the sorceress briefly on the cover art, but we have yet to see a close-up picture of her. From what we've seen, Nasty Nork's looking a lot meaner than it did in the original, with much more detail on the horns, the face and the breastplate. And I really like the scar that's been added above his armour, which makes it look like he's had a lot of history. Also, the mace that he's got now looks a lot bigger, a lot more threatening, and makes him look a lot more intimidating to little Spyro. Ripto's also received a considerable facelift in the Reignited Trilogy, with a lot more detail added to his image, which makes him look a much more cunning and dangerous opponent. We don't know a lot about these bosses because we've only seen concept art, but we're sure they're going to be absolutely incredible. 
In the Reignited trilogy, the gems have retained their differences between the first game and the following two. The key components of this are sound and shape. In Spyro the Dragon, the gems are all the same shape, whereas in its successor, the colours of the gems determine the gem shape. Now this all sounds very confusing, so I'll give an example. In the first game, all gems have a uniform shape, but in the second and third games, green gems have a more triangular shape, whereas blue gems have a rectangular shape. In addition to this, the chime made in the second and third games when collecting gems has also returned. Although these points don't really sound like a lot, we think it's the little things which are going to really bring back memories and feeling from the original games. It's a good thing Toys for Bob know they don't need to tweak absolutely everything. We can't do this list without giving a special mention to Spyro 3 because everything we've seen so far in Spyro 3 looks beautiful. Particularly Cloud Spires, which is my personal favorite. The Rhinox look insane. The way the faces look when they attack Spyro to the way they move about looks perfect and is exactly what we remember from the original game. The eggs as well. The animation's a lot quicker than in the original, but that's fine because there's a lot to get through in that game. After looking at all the new footage from Spyro 3, this is the game that's excited me the most and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Every level we have currently seen from the trilogy looks stunning and has been created with great detail and care. This has brought back the magic from the original games as well as adding a new sense of almost intrigue to the levels. Levels such as Stone Hill from Spyro the Dragon and Sunny Beach from Ripto's Rage look vibrant and colourful and others such as Toasty and Treetops have a new creepy and mysterious air to them. The much greater power of the latest generation consoles has also been optimised to increase the distant landscape, something which I, I felt desperately needed um, improving with the trilogy. And in many cases, it actually just adds one because we didn't used to have one before. A great example of this is the clouds and snow down the mountainside, which has been added to high caves. This gives a feeling that the level is within the middle of a vast mountain ridge rather than just in isolation, which it sort of felt like the first time around. It's that time in the video where I ask you a question. If you're new around here, this is the part of the video where I ask a question about something related to today's topic. Today's question is, apart from Spyro the Dragon, what was the first game where Tom Kenny, the guy who's voicing Spyro in every game in the trilogy, did not voice him? If you get it right, be sure to let me know down in the comments. If not, don't worry, there's always the question in the next video to redeem yourself. Okay, so there are just a few reasons we are so excited for the upcoming Reignited trilogy. Sadly, we couldn't create a point out of all of our ideas because we just didn't have the time. Somehow we didn't even properly mention the music toggle between old and new themes, which is a fantastic feature. But I hope you enjoyed what we have to share. As always, do subscribe for more content like this. Check out the channel, there's lots of gaming stuff already on there, and there's lots more coming up. Also, if you want to see more on the Reignited trilogy, let me know, I'd love to make more. Thank you, Jake, once again, and thank you for watching. I'm off to dream about purple dragons now, so goodbye for now.